Okay, for this demo, we are going to learn how to do something called spline modeling. Splines in Cinema 4D are the same thing as paths in Illustrator or Photoshop, right? They're, if you've ever used that, they're essentially um, a line between two points, right? And they can be curves, they can be straight, um, and there's many different tools in order to draw those. Now, one of the things um, that you want to do whenever you're working with splines is we want to use one of the views that is either top, side, um, or um, bottom. I can't remember if it's top, left, or right, what we do, but top, right, and front, all right? You wanna use one of those views, and again, you get to those views by pushing on the little um, icon here in the corner of the viewport. Um, the reason that you wanna use those rather than the perspective view is because when you're drawing a spline in perspective view, um, there's a chance that one point will be in the foreground and Cinema 4D will, when you move your mouse up for the next point, it's not gonna necessarily be locked to the ground plane or wherever, it, it can end up anywhere in space. And so it's a really frustrating way to work. And so it's best to do these things in two dimensions. And if your splines aren't exactly two dimensional, um, if say you ha you're drawing something on the X, Z plane and you accidentally have it up a couple units in the Y plane, the tools that we're gonna use to essentially create a skin around those splines um, can cause significant problems. Um, it just, it looks weird. So let's go ahead and start. Um, we're gonna start by going in the front view and, and the object we're gonna be creating, um, I don't have a model of it. If you looked at the examples um, in the project description um, for the class, you'll see it's a, basically it's a squid. And so um, we're going to start with some of the simpler spline tools and then we'll work our way up to build the body of the squid, which is going to be, which uses something called a loft, which is a little trickier and it takes more time. And I will likely show you how to do one or two of those splines and then speed up the tutorial because it just takes a lot of time to do all the different ribs that we're going to need to do. So let's go ahead and get started by making a tentacle. And so to make a tentacle, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start by using one of the spline tools. And so if you go to the icons at the top of the page, there are, there's the spline pen. If I click and hold, um, you'll see all of these different options, right? There's the spline pen and the spline pen looks like, works like the pen tool in Illustrator, Photoshop, or any um, program like that, where you have the ability to essentially set a point at, by clicking once, or if you click drag, you actually create a curve, right? So it works basically identically to those um, tools. The sketch tool is essentially freehand, right? You can just draw freehand. Um, if you have a drawing tablet or something like that, it's a really nice way um, to work as well. Um, there's a smooth tool which allows you to smooth things out. You can essentially create more points around a corner using the spline arc tool. And then there's a bunch of presets, right? There's an arc, a circle, a helix, an n-gon or an n-side, right? Which is can be a hexagon or septagon or octagon or whatever. Rectangle, star, text, four-sided, cissoid, cogwheel, um, et cetera, et cetera. Formula, you actually have to enter a mathematical formula and it will generate a spline based on that. Um, and then there's the profile and the flower. There's many options out there. Today, we're gonna start by working with the spline pen, and then we're also gonna create a circle. So let's go ahead and use the spline pen. And um, we're just gonna create something tentacly. So it can just sort of curve across the screen. It doesn't matter where you start or where you stop. Again, if you click once, you get straight, you get hard corners. I'm gonna undo all of those points by hitting Command or Control Z. If you click drag when you create a corner, you can create a curve, right? And click drag again, and click drag again, and then maybe I'll have this um, curl up a little bit. 
And then to finish a spline, you'll notice that this point is kind of hovering off here in space. I'm just going to hit the escape key to end the spline at the last point that I drew. All right, so I've created this spline, and this is going to serve as the path for the length of our tentacle. And so we need to create one more spline object, and that's going to be, we're going to go create a circle. And obviously that circle is totally enormous, um, so we're going to make some changes on that. So uh, I do want you to note in the object manager, right, when a spline is one of the spline primitives, like a circle, um, it's named circle, whereas if you've drawn it from scratch, it's called a spline by default. So for, with the circle, we have some object properties and um, we can create rings, we can make it an ellipse. There's a lot of options, but we're just gonna focus on the radius right now. And we want the radius to be, let's just try five centimeters, right? And when I do that, you'll see that it's significantly smaller um, in diameter. Right now, the plane is set to XY. This intermediary points is set to uniform and eight. And so if I go up and select my spline, I wanna show you the settings there as well, All right? So here are the attributes we can adjust for any old type of spline. There's actually several different types of curves you can do. If you do linear, it's going to do, essentially it'll swap it. I'm just gonna do this and then I'll undo it, right? But so linear changes it so the curves are gone. Um, cubic adjusts the algorithm that controls how those curves are drawn. Um, Akima is similar. Um, I'm gonna undo that as well. B spline, right, essentially uses these as control points and it curves it within that space. Each one works a little bit differently. Um, in Cinema 4D, if you right click on any word in here, like say type, and you go down to show help, it will open up um, the help window and the help window will go directly to whatever that word was on the screen. So it shows you what linear is. It tells you about cubic and Akima and B spline and Bezier, right? It tells you all of the different settings that are available um, and how to make different adjustments, right? And so um, it's that's one of my favorite things about Cinema 4D is that when you need help, you can right click on something and bring it up pretty quickly, right? So again, you have you click on the word, right click and go to show help and it will jump you right to that point in the manual because the manual is enormous and if you didn't do that, it would, it would be terrible. Okay, so we've got our spline. We're gonna leave all of those settings alone. Um, if we check mark close spline, you'll see that it basically draws a line from the last point to the first point. Something else to note is that the spline color changes from white to blue as it goes along. White is the first point you laid, blue is the last point you laid. And sometimes, depending on what tool you're using, it helps to be able to essentially flip the order of the spline. And we'll talk about that probably later. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out um, and then I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna click S so I can zoom in on this. Okay, so once I've got my spline and my circle, set to the settings that I want. I'm gonna go and hold down on the extrude. Earlier I was saying we're gonna use the extrude and I was, um, I misspoke. We are gonna be using the sweep tool. So I'm gonna select the sweep and I'm gonna make both of these a child of the sweep. Now, as soon as I do that, you'll see that uh, you can start to see the geometry around this object. If I go to back to my perspective view, Right, you can see that now I essentially have this tube that's uniform in size. Now, something that happens occasionally, and if you don't see it happen the first time you do it, um, it's really frustrating. So um, if for some reason you're, um, you've drawn your um, spline in a different plane or something, if we select the circle and we go to where the plane is X, Y, if I change this, to ZY, you'll notice that now my circle is smashed flat and it's more like I've created a ribbon um, that runs through here, right? So if you ever um, 
create a sweep with a couple splines and it's flat in one direction or another, just go ahead and switch to one of the other planes for your circle, for the object that you're sweeping along that spline. Um, choose one of the other planes and that will help you out. Okay, so now that we've done that, um, right, this tentacle is pretty boring and it doesn't look realistic at all. So let's go ahead and select our sweep. Under our sweep, we've got um, several options that we can work with. One of those is the end scale. And the end scale currently is 100%, but if I shrink that end scale down, right, I can make this so that it starts out thick and it slowly makes it way to, its way to become thinner and thinner, right? Now my end scale is currently 7%. Um, the end growth basically says where along the spline is this tentacle ending at, right? So you can see that I can actually, I don't even have to go the full length. Um, I can make this only apply to part of it. This is something that can be animated. And so oftentimes this is a tool that's used to animate something growing um, along a surface. Start growth, right? You can actually have the spline start at a different point um, or the, the the object started a different point along the spline. End rotation, because this is a circle, it doesn't really matter, but it essentially twists the entire spline or it twists the geometry all the way around the spline and you can set the number of degrees. There's a bunch of other options here um, that can be turned on and off and they're for all sorts of different cases that we're not gonna get into right now. Um, under details, there is this grid um, here. And what this is, this allows you to go in and rather than just dealing with your end scale here, it gives you the ability to say, oh, it should be narrower here, but then it should get thicker or thinner and it should change kind of the rate at which that happens. And so I wanna show you how to do that. Let's go ahead and set our end scale back to 100%. And then we're gonna use these tools. And so if I just click on this line right here and bring this down, that's essentially the same thing um, that I just did um, by setting the end scale to, to 7%, right? It, it shrinks that way. You'll notice that there is a curve here. If I hover over this little handle, right, I can adjust the rate at which that goes. I can make it so it gets thin much earlier in the object's history. So it's fat here and then it gets thin and tapers off and becomes very, very fine. I can also make it so that it, it only tapers closer to the end, um, right? So now you can see that it's fat most of the way and it tapers and gets a little thinner. If I pull this up a touch, right, I can make it just a little fatter there. In the case of a tentacle, and granted we're making a really cheesy, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, a really, a really cheesy squid. But in the case of a tentacle, um, I want to, I'm going to have it kind of be fatter most of its length and then get thin at the tip. Something else you can do is if you hold down control and click on the line, you can create an additional point and then you can go in and start to modify things, right? So I could make it so it's fat, thin, fat, um, to delete that, I just have it selected and I hit the delete button, right? And it'll, it'll get rid of that additional point. Um, there, any time there is this details option at the bottom of um, your attribute manager, that means that you can go in and you can adjust curves to really customize the way that um, the, the width or that some setting changes over the length of the object. Okay. So I've got my one tentacle, right? Um, it's still at this point, right? It's only in two dimensions. And so now that I've got the general shape done, it would be great if I could get it to be a little bit th more three-dimensional. And so to do that, I'm gonna uncheck the sweep so it disappears. I'm gonna select my spline. And when I select my spline, I, I want you to notice I'm currently in what's called points mode, 
Okay, this is model mode is the mode we've been using. Points mode allows us to select and modify individual points. And when you select a spline, it automatically adjusts it to be points mode, or at least when you've created a spline. So if I select, say, this point, and I use and I click on the move tool or hit the letter E, now I can actually start to push these points around. I'm going to go click on this point. I'm going to pull it this way a little bit. And so it allows me right, to start to modify this. And the reason I do this um, without the sweep on is it just makes it a lot easier to see those points. right? With the sweep on, I can't really see them. Right, so now I've started to make this thing um, a little bit, uh, you know, more three-dimensional. Um, if I turn the sweep off again, or the sweep off again, I can take this point and maybe push this a little bit this way. I might pull this one over, right? And so, you know, once you've created a spline, you can continue to adjust it. Um, to make it whatever shape you want it to be. I'm actually going to pull this over a touch, I think. And something else you can do, much like um, when I hold, held down control to add a point on that curve that I was editing um, in the window there, I can also hold down control and you'll see the little dotty icon pop up and I can create an additional point on the spline that I'm currently editing. And so if I wanted to get a little bit more um, control over this and maybe pull these curves a little bit in some different direction, right? I can, I can continue to do that. I could add more points along that spline. So I'm going to turn this back on. You know, it's a little lumpy, <laughs> um, but for the, you know, because I don't want to take a century to do this, I'm going to go ahead and leave that. And... I'm going to go ahead and rename this sweep tentacle. And then now I'm going to go ahead and make several tentacles. Um, and I could copy and paste this and rotate them, or I could use an array to make a bunch of them. Um, in this case, I'm going to use an array. And they're all going to look the same. But again, I said this is pretty cheeseball. You could make individual ones and bend each one to have a different posture. Um, but for the sake of time, let's go ahead and go to the subdivision surface up top, create an array, make the tentacle a child of the array, and then we just need to select the array in our object manager and set our radius to, I don't know, 20 or something like that, right? So now we've got these 20, or these seven or, or I guess eight arms coming off this squid. Let's go ahead and make it um, a little bit bigger radius just so they don't overlap quite as much. All right, so oops. There we go. So now they don't overlap quite as much. All right, and you'll see they're totally upside down. Um, but if I select the array and hit the letter R on the keyboard or select the rotate tool from up above, um, I can go ahead and rotate this whole thing. 180 degrees and now I've got this start of an octopus or squid or whatever we want to call it. So this is a great time to go ahead and rename that array tentacles and then let's go ahead and save this project and I am going to go ahead and save this as squid.